Hi everyone and welcome back to another subscriber candle review. If this is your first time to these type of reviews, basically you subscribers can send in your candles to me for some constructive feedback, review, testing here on the channel. It's a great community where we all learn from one another, so these are a lot of fun. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new, my name is Wade. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn. And uh, here on this channel, we do candle reviews, we do candle making tutorials, how to's, tips and tricks, uh, product reviews, fragrance reviews, all sorts of things related to the industry. So if any of that interests you, please consider subscribing and let's go ahead and dive into today's review. So today's products were sent in by Matt with Dude Candles, which by the way, as a dude, I love that name. So before we even dig in, you can clearly see that they've already identified their target market and they've got this defined niche. I'm excited to go ahead and dive in. Okay, so the first thing we have here is a letter, um, branded letter from Matt, uh, Dude Candle. All right, so quickly reading through this letter, and, and Matt did say that this is all totally safe to share, but I don't wanna read the entire thing or the video be too long. So to kind of summarize it, uh, he was frustrated trying to find that masculine candle that he has always been uh, looking for. He was looking for something that reminded him of his favorite leather jacket, working in the garage, the smell of race fuel. So he really was looking for that true rustic man fragrance and uh, he wasn't he wasn't able to find that. So he said he spent a lot of time learning the craft of candle making um, and uh, he's been well received so far. So he's, he says he's been blown away with the brand and the product line has been received to this point. And yeah, he's right. I mean, guys do buy candles. The amount of men buying candles continues to increase year after year. So he's definitely right about that. He does make a joke here that you won't find any exotic vessels or flowery scents here, which is which is great. He knows his market and exactly what he's going for. Having that kind of clearly defined, like this is what I make, this is what I do, and not try to do everything, that can really, really help jumpstart your business. He did say that he threw in a few other couple scents as well because he didn't want my entire house smelling like a garage. So he did provide a few different options. And then he has seen a lot of these reviews on the channel. So he knows I like to make some guesses when I can. I do try to respect the wishes and the privacy of the people sending in the candle. So if there is anything they don't want shared, I will not, I will not share that here on the video. But I do like to make guesses and if they are willing, they can basically fact check my guesses. So he provided a separate envelope, which we will take a look at the end when I'm completely done with this and let me know how close I was on the wax and wicks. And you can see here it says, open after review. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and set this aside and we will get back to this at a later time. Also inside the box here, we have his business card. We have a quick note from Matt. So great branding here. I mean, he's got these, you know what? Let me go ahead and just move this other stuff to the side and we'll come back to everything else in the box here in a minute. Thick, almost kind of hard cardstock slash plastic type of business card. Awesome job. It looks, looks really, really good. Uh, and then we have a quick note from Matt. So this is really cool. This is a custom kind of quick note card that he creates. And uh, then he can add whatever custom message he wants on the back to his customers. Uh, that is such a great idea. Now, a lot of people do custom notes and some type of you know customized or branded uh, thank you notes and thank you cards. But I really like that this is something he can mass produce and it's very high quality. And then he can just use a marker on the back to uh, hand write a note. So that's, that's a really nice little touch. And then attached to that, which he did say on the back of this card was he does like, he wanted to show an example of uncrinkled tissue that he wraps the jars in. But he wanted me to see what that looked like without it being crinkled. And this is really cool. I know I've said this a few times already, but Matt has really, really hit his niche nail on the head here. Um, he's everything is focused about the brand like you cannot be doing this better than what Matt is doing right now I mean just excellent job. So a lot of information here I'm not going to try to do it all here on the camera, but you've got a football you've got a raccoon You've got some mountains. You've got some poker cards some sunglasses. You got a tobacco pipe You have a saloon up here if you can see this a whiskey barrels uh, a lot of really cool stuff going on here. And so I'm gonna have a lot of fun reading through this later. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit of it here in the camera and then maybe you could freeze it and kind of look through it yourself. I'm kind of doing my best here, but really, really neat. Like this is a great idea. All right, very, very impressed, Matt. Um, there's some quotes on here. A gentleman should be ashamed if his deeds do not match his words. That's from Confucius. Uh, he has, uh, little facts. And then he's got some pop quiz about sports. Um, just interesting facts about saloons and whiskey. And I'm glad he sent me this because wrinkle, you know, crinkled around your candle, you might not have really appreciated and noticed everything on it. So, so thanks, Matt, for sending this separately. That's that's a great idea, and I, I'm looking forward to checking that out a little bit more. 
All right, he also sends a separate candle safety card. Um, on one side is the candle safety, you know, standard safety recommendations. He also mentioned that the packing peanuts included in the packaging are biodegradable peanuts, which is pretty common these days. Um, and then on the other side of the card, he just says basically about him. Uh, it says, candle, uh, dude candle, I'm just a dude. And then he gives a little bit of backstory on why he created this brand and a little bit more about the business. And then he provides a special gift just for you card. Uh, this is something he would include if he's going to provide a 50% off coupon or discount or any other thing he wants to offer his customers. And uh, and here on the back for me, it just says two way from Matt. Enjoy the extras. I'm glad Matt sent everything that he would normally send a, a regular customer. That way we can kind of showcase it all and look at what he typically would deliver. The packaging, the presentation, the entire feel you get so far. We haven't even got to the products yet. <laughs> and you're loving it, right? You're, you're getting those extra feels. Um, and uh, I, I'm absolutely loving this so far. It looks like we have four candles, something else, and something else. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pull everything out of the box. As you can see, everything is individually wrapped and then surrounded by packing peanuts. So uh, there's no issues here with packing. Um, I know a lot of you like to see what the inside of these boxes look like to get an idea of what's considered good packing. Um, I would have no concerns about anything in here getting busted. So great job on that. Let's go ahead and get everything out. So we've got everything out here. I'm gonna start with these extra little freebies here that he threw in. First is, I'm imagining this is a uh, shot glass and there we go. So a nice little branded shot glass, makes perfect sense with his theme, his brand, right? And a uh, really, really cool idea. And of course it is branded with his specific logo. And then even brand specific playing cards card player for most of my life. So I really enjoy this personally. Now to the products. We have four candles here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the names and then we will touch on them each briefly. So we have aged bourbon, take a hike, we have sawdust and new kicks. If this is the first time you've seen one of these reviews, the first uh, majority of the video is dedicated to unboxing. We talk about the product branding, packaging, the labeling, the uh, the cold throw, the fragrance themselves. We talk about the wax and the wicks, basically all of that. And then I will do testing on these candles and then come back in the second part of the video and tell you how the testing went and just discuss any feedback I might have. Some of that is going to be just everything I loved about the candles. Some of them might be some potential tips to maybe tweak little things, constructive feedback, things like that. Because there is so many of these candles, there are four of them here. I'm imagining these are using the same, basically the same wax and wicks. So so with that in mind, I'm not going to go into details on every one of them if they're similar, but uh, I did want to at least show you what we're working with here. And I'm really, really excited to try all of these out. Uh, so we're going to start off with aged bourbon. So once again, great custom uh, boxes. And then inside they are wrapped in their branded tissue paper. All right. Now we have working with amber colored jars, which is honestly what I expected, either black or amber jars uh, and these are black and amber great contrast and it fits the the brand perfectly of course very simple big letters across the top of what the name of the fragrance is logo on the top all right so let's go ahead and open this up i expect this to be a double wicked candle just based on the size and it is okay so inside the first thing i always like to do is just run my finger across the top because i can almost instantly tell what type of wax we're working with just by the feel of it not always though especially if you're working with blends right but that smells a lot like your bourbon and oak and maybe even a little bit of tobacco fragrances. There is a fragrance called uh, tobacco and oak or something like that, oak and whiskey maybe um, from, uh, from Rogue Fragrances. And that smells a little bit like that. So these traditional good aged bourbon fragrance. Let's talk about the wax here a little bit. Just based on the feel on top, I would definitely say there's a good portion of paraffin in this, which is obviously very, very common, especially with parasoy blends, but it's not the only indicator for me. On the outside, you will see, um, now this is not important on the burn of the candle or really even the look of the candle when you're using an amber colored jar, but if I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there are some jump lines, um, some, it looks like it looks like some bubbles or different inconsistent jar adhesion, things like that, which again, no one really cares about uh, from a customer perspective near as much as we do, especially in a jar where you can barely see it. But those two combinations um, and the feel of the wax that I would be very, very confident that there is a good amount of paraffin in this candle. Now, what type of paraffin? There are so many kinds. It's, it can be really difficult to tell you specifically which kind they're using. But knowing that uh, Matt has only been doing this for a couple years, a short period of time, I'm imagining he learned from other candle makers online and he's uh, maybe in some Facebook groups or maybe doing a lot of his research from the same type of suppliers that a lot of you and a lot of us use. So with that being said, I, I'm gonna assume he's using kind of a mainstream waxes. 
Um, and so my guess here would be one of three waxes. The two waxes that jump out first to me are either IGI 4630 and then IGI 4627. Those two waxes are very, very similar, except for one comes more of a slab and more, and one of them is more of a kind of a Vaseline feel in an actual bag. Two very common paraffin waxes used because the hot throw on them is just ridiculous. And it's sometimes blended with a softer wax like IGI 6006 or blended with para, some other soft parasoy or soft cocoa soy. So 6006, sometimes 46 uh, or 464, sometimes ProBlend 600. That would be my roundabout guess. Um, I would say a one of those paraffin waxes and then soften down a little bit with a parasoy. As far as the wicks being used, um, I don't actually use those waxes very much myself. When I did before, I, I tested a lot of uh, HDP, LX, Eco and CD. Uh, actually, I even tested some Eco as well. Or did I already say that? I might've said that already. Um, if I had to guess though, just looking at the wick, I would narrow this down to either HTP or CD wicks. It's so hard to tell the difference looking at these, which one it might be. Based off the sizing, if I had to guess, I'd say CD. Being double wicked, it's really hard to know what sizes they went with here. Again, I've, I don't use this wax in general, but let alone trying to figure out how it's double wicked, I would be shooting in the dark here. It could be anything between a CD, six up to a CD 10. If they're HTP, I would say anything between an HTP 73 up to an 83. So those are just my roundabout guesses. But anyways, that's my guess on the wax. That's my guess on the wicks. I think fragrance oil is really good. Definitely that masculine fragrance. Love to look and feel the jar. Um, I could not be more impressed so far. Oh, I do want to, I do want to mention, so this is the kind of jar that's used for cosmetics a lot, for example. They have an inner seal, um, they are that plastic lid, and uh, it's totally fine to use those for candles. As long as your customers are not putting out the candle by taking the, the lid and putting it on top, that will start melting and damaging this lid. So hopefully they aren't, they are not doing that. Next up is called Take a Hike. Before we go any further, I was going to mention that the candle doesn't have the net weight or anything like that on the label, and I was going to point that out, and then I realized, hold on a second, I didn't, I didn't really talk enough about the packaging, the actual custom box. I looked at the front of it and kind of neglected the sides. Well, the sides have uh, different information on each side. Uh, one of them just basically is another kind of fun fact about dude candles, but then on that product box, they do talk about the net weight. These are 16 ounce candles or 473 gram candles. As long as it's somewhere acceptable and on the product packaging, you're good to go. And it is on the box. And on another side, it says made for guys, masculine design, manly sense. Again, just really hitting that brand hard. And then on the, uh, the back side, it says masculine scented candles without any hint of feminine flowery scents or perfumes, pure and simple. Um, each candle is brewed to achieve the boldest scent possible, aged perfection in oak barrels, and contain zero calories. And then it says parentheses, come on, that's funny. Back to the second candle called Take a Hike. All right, I like this one better, personally, but that's just because I like woodsy fragrances. This does smell like you're taking a, a hike through the woods, through the mountains. Yeah, this is a really good fragrance. It, it's mostly pine and it has a little touch of what smells like a little bit of eucalyptus or spearmint. The wax and the wicks are gonna be the same on both of these, it appears. Next up, we've got two smaller candles here. This one is called Sawdust. It is an eight ounce candle, 226 grams. Consistency across the board on all these products, love it. That's interesting. So it's it's uh, it has the sawdust notes, the undertone, but without being like overly wood chippy, like like too sawdust. It smells like a hint of sawdust and some vanilla. Like it's it's sort of sweet, so it is going to be pleasant to burn in your house without it smelling like you're just sawing wood the entire time. That's really interesting. I was wondering what that sawdust was going to be like. I was like, is it going to be that like almost overwhelming? If I had to guess, it smells like some vanilla, maybe a touch of tobacco, and, and then that sawdust fragrance. I don't know that I would have known it was sawdust unless he told me, but the fact that it says that and then you smell it, you're like, holy cow, that's that's really interesting. I still like Take a Hike a little bit better, but I'm the most intrigued by this one. Uh, and then the last one is New Kicks. I'm gonna imagine this is our leather fragrance. Without even opening this up, I definitely smell the leather. I have a leather fragrance. I freaking love leather. I don't know why, but I love the smell of the leather. There we go. Oops. I, I have to say this is probably my least favorite of the four, although it's probably the most rugged of the four. So I have a leather fragrance and I absolutely love, love it. It is almost a pure leather fragrance. This one smells more like uh, working actually in your garage. I smell leather and almost like, like oil 
and um, like fuel, like gas. Like when he was talking about like car racing and like motor oil and, and grease and burning tires, that's kind of what this smells like to me, which is not a bad fragrance at all. I mean, it, it if that's what you're going for, it's perfect. I just happen to like just pure leather so much that that's why I'm a, a fan of that one. But if you're looking for something that's not just leather and you want to smell your garage, then it's hard to go wrong with this one. This, I can't imagine everything that's in this. This is not just leather. This has got a lot of different things going on. I'm really interested in how this is going to smell when it's burning in the house. I think it's going to come together in a more kind of well-balanced aroma. I'm gonna definitely be burning this in my own area, like my own workshop. Oh, real quick, these two smaller jars. If, if it's a CD, I would imagine it's an eight or a 10. If it's an HDP, just based off the size of it, looks like about an 83 maybe even a 93. Looking at these, they all seem like they might be a little over wicked. But again, I don't use this blend, so I don't really know how it burns. You might have to wick it that large if it's a really viscous wax blend. So we will see after I have a chance to test these all out. Before I step away and do the testing, and, and of course I'll be right back here in the video, so don't go anywhere. I'm gonna give you the feedback after testing. But before I do that, if you're interested in any future candle reviews, be sure to check out the playlist. I have a playlist dedicated for all of these reviews and you can learn a little something different from each one. Plus it's really just interesting to see all the work that other candle makers are doing. I appreciate you all. Um, and if you are interested in sending in a candle in the uh, in the future as well, just let me know in the comments section and I will coordinate with you and we will go from there. So real quick, just in case I forget in the second part of the video, I just wanna say thanks to Matt for sending these in. Uh, this, you're, this is just excellent. You've done an awesome job. So uh, thanks, dude. All right, I'll be right back. All right, everyone, testing is complete. Let's talk about how these candles burned. And uh, yeah, I just wanna dive right in. Absolutely love these candles. Um, as I really talked about in the first part of the video, I just found these really, really interesting. Um, great packaging, great presentation, and I can say that generally speaking overall, they performed really, really good as well. So let's start with the two single wick jars first. The first one I'm gonna start with is New Kicks. Now this was the one that was my least favorite in the first part of the video. It smelled like, almost kind of like gasoline, garage, leather, grease. It was kind of hard to describe. Not that, not that I didn't like it, that I hated it or anything. It just was my least favorite because it was almost a little overwhelming to me. However, I gotta say, burning, this one, everything came together so much better. Absolutely loved it. Ended up being my favorite one. It, it truly smelled like you were either in a like a leather shop mixed with a wood shop uh, or a or a garage. It was really, really, really good. Um, I, I actually just ended up loving this one. I definitely picked up more leather and a little bit of that workshop kind of garage feel as well. So I I love this one. Um, ended up being my favorite. Uh, it turns out of all of the ones that I tested. The other thing I want to mention is that the hot throw was absolutely incredible with this one. Uh, it, it started throwing almost immediately and it threw extremely well in any size room. In fact, you couldn't help but smell this in any other rooms even near where it was burning. The only thing I would maybe recommend on this one is potentially consider wicking down maybe one size. There was nothing really wrong with it. I didn't really get too much uh, of a curl or too much of a mushroom uh, until I burned it a couple hours past normal burn time. So most most of the time, if like if customers are trimming it correctly, you're not going to have any issues. But if any customers do, tr you know, burn it a little bit longer than that standard three or four hour burn time, this one uh, could probably benefit from one size wick down. And I don't think you'd have any negative effects by doing that. Flame was a little bit larger. Uh, for the molt, for most of the burns. So I think wicking down one size on that one might do you a little good. And we're gonna talk about my overall thoughts on the wicking here in a minute, but you will notice that, I do wanna point out um, that in this video, you'll see that the wick started off a little hot and tall and sooty. And I'm gonna address all that at the very end, but uh, I just didn't want you to think that I just skipped over that. So let's move on to the next one, which is the other smaller single ounce or single wick candle, which was sawdust. Now I mentioned in this one that it was a little bit of sweet and you smelled a little bit of the sawdust and I was, Really interested on that one because how they came up to make that smell like actual sawdust with some sweetness was pretty impressive. That was the one that intrigued me the most, uh, the cold throw. Now after burning it, the hot throw was not as strong. Let's let's start with that. It wasn't as strong as the new kicks, uh, the one we just talked about, but it was still really, really good. In fact, all of these had good hot throw. Hot throw is not gonna be concerned with any of these. It's usually not a concern with the type of wax that I think we're dealing with here, um, which we'll find out here at the end. But anyways, the hot throw was great, just not as strong as I is uh, the new kicks was. Now, I really did appreciate the slight sweetness that was combined with that sawdust smell, but I do have to say, I didn't smell near as much of that sawdust as I did uh, in the cold throw. Now, I don't know how you smell sawdust in a candle anyway, so I was pretty impressed that there is even a hint of small, uh, of the sawdust, but it's definitely more of kind of a sweet vanilla slash tobacco type fragrance, 
with a little bit of that sawdust hint. So I think it's a still a really good fragrance and a really good name. And I actually love this one quite a bit. And it grew on me the more and more that I burned it. I think if you kind of forget this is called sawdust, this is an absolutely great kind of sweet vanilla tobacco-ish type of fragrance, in my opinion. All right, let's move on to these double wicked ones. Uh, this uh, first one we're gonna start with is Take a Hike. That was the pine, the fir, the one that I felt like was mixed with some kind of eucalyptus or spearmint because I feel like there's something else there, almost like a refreshing menthol-y kind of cool fragrance to it. Uh, so I, this was one of my favorite ones out of the, out of the, uh, almost said out of the bottle. This was one of my favorite ones with the cold throw, just smelling it before I burned it. One thing I would suggest on these, on this double wicked one, is to wick down one size. Uh, the, the flames were pretty tall and hot pretty much the entire time I test burned these. Again, nothing ever reached a point where I would have been super concerned. It wasn't super hot or throwing a ton of smoke or soot or anything, but I think it could definitely benefit by wicking down. Uh, it's a double wicked container. You were getting plenty of heat in the jar to get a full melt pool, even at the very top. Uh, it was throwing extremely well. I just don't uh, I, I would just probably recommend wicking down a size or two, and I think you'll get a bit, little bit longer burns uh, at a safer level. So uh, I know these double wicked candles, a lot of people like to burn them and they forget about them for several hours. And so uh, you can really benefit by some extra burn time, I think, if you wick down one size. Now, I don't know exactly what wick sizes we're, we're looking at, but we'll see here at the very end. The last one we're going to talk about is aged bourbon. Out of all the fragrances, this was my least favorite, mostly because it was nothing that unique for me. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of these kind of bourbon or aged bourbon and whiskey type fragrances, uh, and it was good. There was nothing wrong with this one at all. Uh, just out of these selection, it would have been my personal least favorite, but I highly doubt anyone is not going to like this fragrance. Um, and then once again on this one, I would wick down. I'm assuming it had the same wick size as the other double wicked one, and I'd probably wick down a little bit, um, one size again, and go from there. You may find out that after doing that, it doesn't really help you. It makes things worse or doesn't really provide any benefit. That might be the case. Um, I know you've done your due diligence on testing these, but if it was me, I would probably be trying to wick these down one more size. Now, let's talk about the overall wicking on these. All of them started off when I first lit them a little bit too tall of a flame and throwing a little bit too much smoke and soot. Part of that could be the wax combination used. We'll know here when I check the uh, the actual materials being used in the secret card, the secret envelope. The other part of it is all of these were not trimmed quite down to a quarter inch. I know that we ask our customers to do that. Uh, personally, I always pre-trim my wicks to a quarter inch because I don't know that a lot of customers are going to trim it. And if they don't, they, uh, you end up with a, a tall, large flame at the very beginning, the very first burn. After trimming these down appropriately, they were a little bit better, but I think it could have been a combination of longer wicks as well as the potentially either the fragrance load or the wax being used. But after that first burn where the flames are kind of wild and throwing a lot of soot and smoke, it calmed down after a few minutes. Um, there are a lot of waxes that do that out there. Oh, and also if these are, the wicks that I think they might be, I, they're either HTP or CD. And I'm, I, if I had my guess after watching them burn, I think they're CD wicks. CD wicks are kind of bad about throwing a lot of smoke and soot early on, and then they kind of calm down. If that is the case, then that would be another reason why these candles are behaving that way. But they did totally calm down, ended up burning almost perfectly, especially the single wicked one. They, bear, they burn perfectly the entire time for the most part. And then the double wicked ones, other than being maybe one wick size too big, uh, also burned much better as you let the candles burn. That is my overall thoughts on how these burn. They were absolutely great candles. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, secret envelope and fact check my guesses. Okay, so here we are. We've got that envelope. Wax and wick info open after review. Well, here we are. First of all, again, it's on great custom letterhead. I, I love it. Everything was branded absolutely perfect. But anyways, uh, it says, wait, I feel pretty confident you will probably guess correctly on these as soy and paraffin are visually quite differently. So yeah, I mean, I think I mentioned in the first part of the video that it felt like a paraffin or at least a heavy paraffin soy blend. It, it looked like that. It felt like that. And then after test burning it, I would say it burned that way as well. So I would stick with my paraffin soy blend uh, for sure. But I would definitely think that there's probably more paraffin in it. Um, I even thought that it was in the family of the 4627, 4630 type family. But let's keep reading. I mostly use IGI 4625 with a touch of ProBlend 600. Well, there you go. In fact, I might have even said specifically ProBlend 600 that it was blended with. If not, I think I mentioned maybe a few different options. Now this says I mostly use IGI 4625. 
That one shocks me a little bit. Um, I would have thought it was 4627 or 4630 as they are softer paraffin waxes. Uh, and they felt like that to me. They were definitely that kind of Vaseline texture a little bit, kind of smooth. Uh, I would have not thought 4625. 4625 is a hard, really hard uh, paraffin wax that is really meant for pillars and wax melts. And you got to break it up with a chisel, it's so hard. Uh, however, you can soften it up with something like Problen 600. So either it really is 4625, like he said, that hard paraffin wax, and then it's softened up with the Problen 600, or maybe he meant 4627, uh, and then also a little bit of Problen added in as well. Part of the benefit of doing that is it changes, it makes it a little easier to burn by adding the Problen 600. Plus that's a pair of soy, so you can sell this as a soy blend. You know, a blend can, can mean that there's just a lot of different kind of waxes involved. As far as the wicks, uh, it says wicks used were dual CD8 in the double wick jars and single CD10s in the small jars. My guess was either HDP or CD wicks in the first part of this video, I believe. Uh, and then after burning them, I was pretty confident they were CD, just the way they behaved. Turns out that was correct. Uh, on the sizing, I thought on the double wick, it could have been anything CD6 through 10, uh, and they were actually CD8, so right in the middle. Uh, I would probably try CD6s, by the way, or CD7s if you can find them. I would probably double wick with two of those and just see if it works a little bit better. It might not, but it's worth a shot, I think. And then for the single wicked one, I guessed a CD8 or a CD10. Of course, I gave a couple HDP options as well. Uh, and they turns out they ended up being a CD10 in the small jar. So uh, I'll be honest, I, I don't really use this wax a lot. So those, those were guesses. They were kind of educated guesses. I have used it in the past. But just knowing the size of the jar and how viscous of a material that some of this paraffin wax is, I was not surprised that it would be CD wick to really, it, it handles really viscous waxes. I thought the wick choices were absolutely great in this one. Uh, and your wick sizing was really, really good as well. Maybe a few tweaks might improve them a little bit. Uh, but other than that, man, I cannot tell you, Matt, how good these candles were. It's the branding that I think you even hit a home run with here. Uh, beyond how good the candles performed, uh, I think your strong point here is your hold on the market and what you targeted specifically. I think you picked a great niche. Um, and even though it's not as unique as uh, of a niche as it was 10 years ago, you've done such a good job with it that you grabbed a small part of the market and then you went full force at it. I mean, your, your letterhead, your branding, the, uh, the custom tissue paper, the custom boxes, the labels, the color theme, everything. I just really want to tell you that you did an excellent job on these. I hope that everyone enjoyed this video and this review. Please give a shout out to Matt down in the comments below. Uh, and really any other feedback, please give this video a like, a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I appreciate all the support and all of you uh, for being here. And once again, big, big shout out to Matt for sending these in. Be sure to check out some of the videos on the channel and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.